The ultimate present under the tree. What a night it was. Of course, the ultimate present under the tree was actually Juwan Johnson getting that garbage third reception that we needed to uh, cash our show best bet. Two and one on the show again yesterday. That is all thanks to Mark Zinno, uh, who has won all of his halves of the double play this week. I, on the other hand, have not won a single uh, half of the double play. I stink this week, Mark Zinno, but at least... The Cleveland Guardians won last night for a small measure of dignity and, uh, quite frankly, joy in my life. I hate you. Okay? I don't (laughs) like you. I don't know if I want to do this show anymore with you. Um, I think I should ramp my insults of you up to another level. Mr. Lucas advanced to the World Series over the Cleveland Guardians tweet. You're such a jackass. You're You're such an idiot. You know? Yeah, you just say, and, and then you text me, and and you're annoying, and then all of a sudden you got real quiet because Aaron Boone's a moron. He's an absolute moron. Oh, like, you don't like him? I will take it to my great. There was no reason for Luke Weaver to be in that in game two in a non-save situation when you have a top five bullpen in baseball, and theoretically all those guys can get anybody out. There was no reason. So you pitched him. You ready for this? Are you ready? In game three of the ALDS, in game four of the ALDS, in game one of the ALCS, in game two of the ALCS, and in game three of the ALCS. It was a matter of time before it came back to bite you in the ass. And oh, by the way, Aaron Boone, this just in, Luke Weaver is not Mariano Rivera. Stop bringing him in for four and five out saves. It's only going to end badly. I I, I just, I, I hate him managing this team, and I respect the hell out of Jeff Passan, but I saw somebody sent me an article, and I refused to read it, about what a good manager Aaron Boone is that Jeff Passan wrote. My God! You just you, you guys haven't lived through this the way you have. You, you haven't watched this. They will not win a World Series with that man at the helm. Period. My God. He and let Steven Vogt off the hook. Oh, they need to go. I mean, when you get a home run from Judge and, and Stanton in that scenario back to back, and you don't close that game out, off class. My a. God, my God, against the best closer in baseball, my God! And then on top of it all, on top of it all, this is the Yankees. You know how many games this year the Yankees have lost when both Judge and Stanton hit a home run in the same game? Please tell you me how many games they lost this year. That what? was their fifth loss oh, all season wow. long. They have like two losses when Judge and Soto hit a game, hit a bomb in a game together. Like, you can't lose that game. You can't. And they did. And and whatever. Like, whatever. At least they went 2-0 and yesterday because the first five under for the Yankees cashed. And Juwan Johnson got a late garbage reception from Spencer. Yes. What did I tell you? I call it perfect. I said he needs to have two by the first half. And then, boom, you got the third one in the second half at the very end. So, thank you, Juwan Johnson. Because Spentler Rattler stinks. He's stuck he's in awesome. South Carolina. He's stuck he's in awesome. Oklahoma. I don't know what he's doing in the NFL, but he is he's not. bad. In the NFL. Like, I don't understand how these guys get into the NFL. Like, why can't there's I get not in the 30, NFL? There's not well, – well, stop it. I hate – because you're – you know, I'll tell you what. You're very large in stature. You're a strong man. You're much stronger than me. You don't have the height to be an NFL quarterback. I'm going to tell you right yeah, now. Yeah, okay? you know, Rattler. And that is true. Neither does Kyler Murray. <laughs> Neither does Bryce Young. I'm tall. These are all people who get to write NFL quarterback <laughs> on their W-2. I'm tall. Just can't throw the ball 30 yards, probably. That's that's my problem. The last anyway. athletic thing you did was take a dump. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you a story about last night. Oh, I gave up oh, on the game. Cool. I gave up on the game last night. It's 5-3. I, 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 I tweeted the New York Yankees advanced the World Series. It was over. Now, we do a little – we do strict bedtime in the power household, uh, Mark Zitto. And I, I looked at my daughter. And I said, look, the game's over. They're not going to win. Let's just go up to bed. Now, like any self-respecting father who's a sports fan, I obviously brought my phone with me and left it on my leg while I was reading. And I saw that there was a runner on second, two outs, and I said, what am I doing reading this book right now? The Guardians need me. So I looked at my daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, lover, death, looked at her, and I said, you know what? I said, I said, story time is over. I got to go downstairs. Ran down, it was a Taylor, it was a Taylor Swift book, too. It was awful. I was dying, man, reading this thing. Anyway. I run downstairs. What do I see? Noel's home run. 
End of story. I ran back upstairs, said, Mazzy, the game's tied. She was already asleep. That's all I got for you. And then we went. That's it funny, was, it was because it was the exact opposite. My kids and I were watching. We got to the bottom of the ninth, <laughs> right? And I said, kids, as soon as this is over, we're going upstairs. And there's two outs. I'm like, okay, kids, get ready. We're going upstairs. Then he hits the double off the wall because he left the change up fat in the middle of the plate. And then the next guy gets up. And I didn't say anything. I just shook my head. And then he hit the ball to the Cuyahoga Falls. And uh, it's right by uh, me. I said, I said, kids, get upstairs. We're going to bed. Dad, game's not over. I said, it's over. We're going to bed. Dad, Dad, the game's not over. It's over. They lost. Let's go to bed. <laughs> by the time Parenting. we got upstairs in the bed, guess what? Kids, it's over. Okay, let's go to sleep now. <laughs> I showed them the score Parent on the phone, 7 5. Uh, uh, uh. Parenting in the Power and Zinno household here on the program we have brought to you. All right, let's get to some winners because that's what the people uh, want to hear. And there is ALCS game four tonight after oh. last night's incredible. Incredible turn of events. You are going to handle ALCS game four. You believe, now we're not taking a side here. We're being objective. You think no matter I'll which side I wins. I don't, want it, to, I don't want to, you shut up. I'll say what I believe. I don't need you to speak for me. Okay, I'm done with you. I've had enough of you. All right? Piss me off last spoken. night. Piss me off. Okay? I'll tell you what I believe about tonight. The fan in me really wants to believe the Yankees are going to bounce back. But the realistic fan in me believes that we're dead in the water. Um, look, after an emotional game like that, right, typically what I think happens in the very next game is it's a blowout. I don't know which side is the right side. I would tell you if you feel strong on a side, lay the one and a half of the Yankees or bet the Guardians' money line. But what I feel confident in is that this is going to be a one-sided affair. Either the Yankees come back with a vengeance and they say, screw this, we're going to pound you guys, we're going to beat you, you know, go up 3-1, going home, clinching this thing, or the Guardians get right back in this thing and make it a clean series, best of three, the rest of the way out. And they're going to do so in pretty easy fashion. Remember, you have two starters on the mound today in Luis Heal and Gavin Williams who have not pitched a single inning in the postseason. Mm. Not a single inning. The last time Not Gavin one. Williams pitched was September 22nd. That's a long time ago. Uh, almost a month. The last time Luis Heal pitched was September 28th. That's three weeks ago. My guess is neither one of these guys are all that sharp. These bullpens both have been overworked because Aaron Boone's an idiot. Um, but that's a whole different conversation. But the bullpens have been overworked. And that means that the guy who's more sharp at the start and his team gets a lead will have more margin for error. But all I feel confident in is that this thing is a blowout and runs are coming from one side. So at seven and a half, I'm taking the over. Okay. Smash that like button. If you're rolling with the over in game four, if I bring up Luis Heels FIP, scale of one to 10, how mad do you get at me? I might just like literally exit the show. Like I, I might not even finish it. I'll let you do the rest of it by yourself. Okay. Go ahead. I dare you. Go ahead. Go, I, I, go ahead. I'll be out like a fat girl playing dodgeball. Go. Go. 4.14. It. It's 4.14. It's not good. It's got a 12.1% walk rate, too. <laughs> Mark, I'm killing Mark Zell. <laughs> He, you know, like, he's, he's very he's very good at doing that stone face. This is a man who, by the way, has uh, protected our country in combat. He's very good at staying yeah. stone face. So I don't I'm know back. if he actually left or not. Anyway, no, I, actually, I actually left oh. and came back. <laughs> okay, there we go. But very good, very good. I was scared for a second. I wouldn't know what to do without you. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the NLCS. Okay, uh, did you see who's on the mound for the Mets tonight? Oh yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> Our old friend David Peterson, as the Mets season hangs in the balance at home against the Dodgers. And Mark Zinno, as you know, I've been a big fan of David Peterson uh, his entire career. And we're going to back him. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, uh, I'm going to back him in this sort of kind of tonight. Uh, you, I like the first five under. You in this. are the worst, most flaccid human alive. After ripping on this guy for two months straight. About what his expected ERA is and his expected FIP and everything else. 
about, oh, he's for Gazy. Oh, he's a Ponzi scheme. Oh, he's not good. It's the time to fade David Peterson. Every time he shoved it right down your throat, and now you're going to fold like a cheap suit and back him in the playoffs. You, you shill. You, you, you <laughs> piece of work, you. There are words I can't say I want to say. Yeah, you have a you have a set of cojones on you. You know that? Oh, they're you, big. You, they're you, big. You, this is big you. as John Kenzie Noel's. Me. Oh, yeah, All right. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about the first five under? Yeah, Four sure. And a half. Look, look uh, this is a classic, Mark. If it ain't staying under early, it ain't staying under late situation, That's right? Um, look. Here's the thing with Peterson, okay? I am a little concerned still because my one of my big issues with Peterson all year has been the number of walks he issues. And the Dodgers have been walking a lot in this series. I think they've walked 31 times? What are we – my God. But And that's why they've been able to score 30 runs on 36 hits. Mark, I think there's a little bit of offensive regression coming for the Dodgers. Now, as you know, Peterson's a lefty, okay, that is – for what it's worth, the worst split for both Otani and Muncie, the Dodgers' two best hitters. I just, the Dodgers just get, Otani is batting like a 1,000 with runners in scoring position this postseason. I have never seen anything like that. If there's a man on base, this guy just gets a hit. I would not pitch to him in that situation. Remember the old Barry Bonds thing when guys, when he was walked once yep. with the bases loaded or whatever? I would do that. You can't pitch to this guy with runners in scoring position. Um the Mets have only scored five runs the entire series. So th- their right. offense ain't exactly cooking. So yes. give me the under four and a half, first five. You had the under four and a half on the first five in the Yankees-Guardians game yesterday. So we'll try it here with the NLCS. My half to double play. I guess it's to be a low-scoring game five overall. The the over is, is 4-0 and in the series. But uh, again, Jack Flaherty, he's, we should mention him, the starter for the Dodgers. Uh, he pitched pretty well in uh, game number he's one. Round, he's did he, not? Form. he has rounded yeah. into form. Seven shutout innings allowed only two hits. And the Dodgers bullpen, their high leverage arms. Are, so it's going to be low scoring early, under four and a half. My half of double play to go along with Mark taking over full game in Yankees Guardians. All right. From Major League Baseball, let us now turn the page to college football. Mark, would you like to give out our show best bet for tonight first? Or would yeah. you like to talk about the two big SEC games tomorrow? Well, let, let's let's uh, let's put the show best bet out there uh, okay. and not make the people wait because we've done enough talking and how much I hate you and uh, how much I don't want to do this show with you any, anymore after what uh, happened last night. Um, so let's get the people what they want. <clears throat> Excuse me. All, All right. right. Or- Oregon right, and action. Purdue. Yes. Yes. Oregon and Purdue. Uh, uh, you talk – if they ain't covering early, Mark – they ain't covering late, ain't covering and we're talking late. about yeah, the Purdue covering. Boilermakers. Uh, because, a, a letdown spot for Oregon, obviously, off the win over yeah. Ohio State. Well, um, it, it is the Purdue Boilermakers because they don't do anything well at all. <laughs> they suck on offense. They suck on defense. They suck really bad on defense. Um, that said, uh, they are home where – they have been able to keep things at least, you know, save the Notre Dame game at least a little bit respectable. <laughs> that wasn't close. No, that one wasn't close. But they hung in with Nebraska for the most part uh, in that game, who's got a really good defense. And that was a 0 0 game at halftime. Um, and look, the, the Oregon Ducks, okay, uh, number two team in the country, as good as it gets right now. Um, they have a home date with Illinois on deck. And then Michigan the following week. So they got two back to back big games that they're going to play coming up. Wouldn't really call it a true look ahead spot, but easy to overlook Purdue here. Um, I think the game script boils down to very simply Purdue has one chance to hang in this game. Again, the, the, the total for the game is, is 27 and a half. I mean, the, the side, um, the numbers, tw- I think there are 20, actually 28 and a half. There's 29 and a half out there. Uh, well, My the God, it keeps going up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's like on Viagra right now. It just keeps getting bigger. Um, so the the only chance that Oregon has, I mean, that Purdue has here, is to hang around for the first thirty minutes. That's it. If they are not cover, if they are not within seventeen at halftime, they are not even going to. Co- they're not going to come close to covering this game. Now, with this number going up, I'm seeing one shop at sixteen and a half. Let me check some other numbers here. Uh, just to see what we have. There are 17s out there. Grab the 17. Obviously, grab the 17 um, mm-hmm. with Purdue. 
it may, you might even want to wait closer to the kick to see if a 17 and a half pops up. Because in that case, it'd be, you know, basically three touchdowns uh, that they'd have to cover by. Because 18 and 19 would theoretically be dead numbers. But when you're at 17 right now, let's call it official. 17 is a consensus line. Purdue plus 17 in the first half. If they can't keep this thing close, they're not, they have no shot. I think there is a game script where, let's say, Oregon could be up by 7 or 10 at half and then run away in the second half and wear down mm-hmm. Purdue. Yeah, I think that game script is very live. They start slow. They're not on their A game. They make adjustments at halftime. They steamroll them in the second half. Yeah, I think that's possible. But what I don't think is possible is for Purdue to be down 24 to 3 at halftime and then come roaring back in this game to cover it. So again, Purdue plus 17, call it 17. I know we got 16 and a half on the screen there, but 17 uh, first half. They did kind of come roaring back last week against Illinois. Almost stole that yes. game, Purdue. But yeah, I agree. This is Oregon. Um, the, the game script you talked about, about the potential for, okay, maybe it's a sleepy first half for Oregon, then they pull away in the second half. We saw that when they went up, uh, or is it down? I believe it's down to Corvallis uh, in the Civil War. But when they played Oregon State, it was a close game in the first half, and then Oregon pulled away in the second. So yeah, there you go, Purdue, first half. Plus points, your best bet. Let us know what you think of that down in the comment section below. Let us know your favorite bets, college football, Major League Baseball, whatever, something else. If there's something else, a look you'd like to share with us, let us know down in that comment section below. We always like to read those. Make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel as well. Uh, Before we get to this big Saturday games, Mark, obviously we both have plays on Friday uh, in college football, I have a 4% best bet. I just want to let the people know about that. It's been a rough week for me. Last Saturday's 4-0 sweep seems like forever and a day ago for yours truly. But we have won nine straight in college football, seven of the last two weeks, 4% best bet tonight. For $29, you can get the Friday 4% best bet and all of my card for Saturday right now, wt.buzz slash bp. Mark Zinno, take some time to uh, talk about yourself. I know you swept last night. I did. I went two and zero, but I'm not going to sit here and top myself the way you do because you're annoying and I'm not. Um, and you were more <laughs> annoying last night when the Guardians won. So there is that. But you can't go to oh, WT. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's really rude when you interrupt me when I'm trying to do this. Okay. <laughs> I said that out loud. Um, anyway. <laughs> But uh, go to wt.buzz.mz. Look, I'll, I'll have a play in the game tonight, one of the college games tonight. I'll have a play in the LCS game. And then I'll also put my college card up there tonight for you guys to get tomorrow, uh, which includes uh, my 4% play, which was our $5 play on Tuesday um, that many of you bought. If you didn't, you can get it this weekend. Uh, sorry, no 5%. We did cash a 5% last weekend, went 3-1 in college. We are 6-1 and one the last two weekends in college football. So, uh, get that Saturday college card if you want the, the Friday games as well. They'll both be available at wt.buzz. That was painless. A little self-promotion. Never hurt anybody, Mark. I thought you did that well. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I could manage a bullpen well, too. Just, you know, don't let Aaron Boone do it. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Vogt got let off the hook, too. He brought Class A in too early. I thought he's been doing that too much, too. Both guys have that problem. Anyway. Uh, these guys, there's only one Mariano. Stop making other guys do the same thing. It doesn't work. It's a recipe for disaster. You're closers very are like upset kickers. They're, 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 they're bound to fail. <laughs> Except good. I hate closers less. A lot less. Okay. Um, your neck of the woods this weekend, the SEC, mm-hmm. they say it's more important than the SEC or something, or it just means more, just I think, is more. that commercial. Yes, I don't uh I don't know about that, but Alabama and Tennessee means a lot. So and Georgia, Texas, my God, oh, oh, what a game! We got to touch on these. Uh, Bama and Tennessee, the losers you know, are they on shaky ground as far as the college football playoff goes? It's going to be somebody's losing no, for a second time this, this year. This is why college football playoff expansion sucks. Okay? Oh, I like it. No, I hate it. I absolutely. And this is why we're not friends. Um, look, love it. This would be an elimination game for Georgia. Last year, it would be an elimination game. You'd be done. Two losses are out. Alabama, Tennessee, it would be an elimination game. Do you know much more? Look, I love the fact that realignment has given us better matchups and more enjoyable matchups to watch throughout the regular season. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying that. I, I, I don't enjoy the lack of urgency about the regular season. Guess what? Alabama, Tennessee, you know what's going to happen to the loser? Nothing. They're both going to make the college football playoff. Because when push comes to shove, by the time we get to late November, 
they're still only going to have two losses. That's it. And they're going to get in. And same thing Good. with Georgia. Good team. The Texas going to get in. So the game literally means nothing. It's fun to watch. I know they all want to win, but the game means nothing. So, yeah, I am, uh, I am what do you call it? Um, I, I would tell you this much. I, you know me, like I've gone to a new thing. Earlier in the year when I started out college football really not well, like I was locking lines in early uh, in the week, and I sort of strayed away from that. It came back to bite me with Texas. Texas is winning this game. If you guys got a three and a half for Texas, I would be smiling right now. Texas is winning this game. Are they going to win it by more than five or six? I This number's touching five now, PP. You know, mm. you get into a range where it feels unbettable. Like you miss the, you miss the best of the number, uh, and it's, it's hard to get back in. Thoughts? Uh, it's pretty crazy that Georgia, who everyone thought was the clear number one team coming to the country, would be getting five points. I mean, that seems too good to pass up, yeah. but I'm like, I, I think I Texas think is the best team in the country right now. Morning. Yeah, I think there'll be some buyback on Georgia on Saturday morning would be yes, my guess. Yes, I do too. Don't be shocked if this thing kicks off at three and a half by, by Saturday night. If this thing's back down to three and a half, four, three and a half or four by, by Saturday night. Yeah, so if you like Georgia, I would get down now. Yeah. Is what the man is saying. Yes. Uh, I don't think this gets anywhere near six, but you know, I think it's no. more likely to be closer to three and a half or three at kickoff. Um, Bama, Tennessee, uh, again, you know, my numbers kind of say te- Tennessee getting points here. This is like an, e- I have these teams rated kind of evenly. So Alabama being favored on the road, uh, kind of raised some eyebrows full candor. I'm not going to have a client plan either of these games. Uh, I think they're tough matchups to call, but, um, I don't know. Tennessee's offense all of a sudden has kind of, uh, hit I the mean- skids. At the same it time has. that Alabama's defense is not playing well. well that, so to me, that Alabama's that decides team. this matchup. That decides this matchup. Alabama's Tennessee's defense matchup. versus Tennessee's offense. Tennessee's offense has hit the skids, and Alabama's defense has hit the skid marks. Um, yeah, they're sh- – yeah. Yeah, yeah, that part. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, God. That might – dear Lord. <sighs> right in the middle of this segment. Why? Um, I, I just threw up my mouth a little bit. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to ask you, BP, because you have these numbers on the tip of your tongue here. Ranked versus ranked, the home team is covering how much again? It it was 57% over the last right. 20 years. Okay. Now, ranked versus ranked, 57% to the home team. I would guess that number is even higher when they are a home dog. Like, typically, the home team is a fit. That's why I like Tennessee here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get to the window on that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a client play. Um, mm. But Tennessee Tennessee is not going to lose. Listen, Alabama went in there with Nick Saban and didn't win two years ago. Now, granted, you know, it was uh, Hendon Hooker and, and you know, not, you know, Nico, I, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I don't know how to pronounce his name. But, um, you know, I, I don't think they're doing it again. Not with Kalen DeBoer and not with this defense. No, no way. They're struggling to get stops. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm probably going to get to the window on Tennessee, I'll tell you that much. And I would, by the way, one more note on Saturday college football. I would love to see, and I w- hope somebody could, could either tweet us or whatever. You and I talked about this game. We're probably not going to play it. It's hold your nose and look away. But somebody please take Ball State plus 27 against Vanderbilt in this huge letdown spot. Somebody please do it. I want to do it. Every fiber of my being says it's the right side. I would love to be able to say to people that I bet on Ball State and want to bet. But Ball State, plus 26 and a half, plus 27. <laughs> Vanderbilt, after the last two wins, come on. Who does Vanderbilt have on, te- on deck next week, BP? Tell the world. Tell the people. Texas. No! Texas at home. Oh! Wouldn't they love to go into that with a three-game win streak? They're going to win the game against Ball State. They're not going to lose it. But if you if you have if you have if you if you have the stomach to bet Ball State and sit down and watch that game for all three hours, <laughs> on the off chance you might have to try to sneak through the back door from thirty five, you know, to uh, or from thirty four to, to twenty seven. Yeah, good luck. Knock yourself out. Uh, please couple do things. It. One, I'll piss everyone off by saying Austin, Texas, is a better city than Nashville, Tennessee. Two. I'm going to tell you that I stole a cover last week. Ball State is due to cover a spread because the way that they didn't cover against Kent State, Kent State was a play for me last week. I I think Ball State has kind of owed one at the betting window after Kent State just stole that cover. Oh, my God. All right, we've gone long today. We're done.
It's it. We have stuff There's to do. There's good information Friday. to the people. Friday. Friday. How about the hard for- I mean, he's wearing a whale shirt. That's the only redeeming factor about you today is that you're wearing a Hartford Whaler shirt. Hartford? The whale? They only beat Vancouver whale? once and twice in a lifetime, Renee. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Clark's All right. reference. I'm all right, sorry. Go, Guardians. Maxine.